my god. <laughs> yeah, this is my room right now. It's somewhat clean, dirtier, and yeah. And it's, I can't believe that I put, like, I have two big boxes of stuff and there's still so much out here. Uh, this weekend, I'm gonna organize all of this. Anyways, anyways, what am I saying? Anyways, oh, this guy, I need some light. Let me shine some light over here. Also, don't get this. It's so bad, especially, maybe in winter it's better, but... Yay! Canada. I feel kind of bad for it because it like starts like that sound. <laughs> it sounds like it's a little too much for it. Anyways, I'm in. Oh my gosh, I've been thinking. I've been. I'll start with this. I've been very depressed. I've been very depressed. <laughs> like actual depressed and um i've been like trying to like climb out of it in so many different ways and i'm very confused there's a lot of change that has happened in my life in my head in my heart and everything um in my relationships with everyone it is really really weird time right now but I was also thinking, I was actually just talking to someone and I was also thinking about like how one of the big things is not having been on YouTube again, not being on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook in over a year really. I have I had like a moment of coming back and but it wasn't really, I wasn't, also I wasn't myself on Facebook, on Instagram, all this stuff and it's so complicated as to the reason why. It has a lot to do with me, a lot to do with my someone uh, and someone, someone and it's, it's complicated. I don't want to get into that um, but I want to kind of just sort of like catch you up. Everything that happened between last July, I mean two Julys ago when I stopped editing the videos because I was burned out and there was just so much to edit, two hours worth of footage every day of me talking and all that stuff. It's uh, It was a lot. And also I wanted to live my life and I did. For the past year, two years, I've really focused on living my life in the moment, being present and turning you off and just experiencing life. And it's been beautiful and it's been very ugly and it's been very a lot of different things and right now i am very very depressed very very low but somehow i have this fighting spirit which is kind of also the reason i'm depressed ironically so here i am still here and i'm still going to be here it's just um I'm dealing, you know, I'm trying to deal and process and all that stuff. However, I was watching, I'm gonna, one of the big things that has changed is my, let's sit down for a little bit because this is really weird. So I've been very private. Now I like privacy and I like respecting people's privacy, um, but I'm also very much an open person, an open book. Um, oh darn it. I don't know if people are home, but yeah. Um, and I'm not blaming a person. I'm not blaming myself. A combination of things has led me to not being as open anymore. I withhold information and then I, I know how much that hurts other people or it hurts me when people withhold information from me. Yet I started withholding information because I felt it was unsafe for me to um, to not do that. I used to be so like driven to not let anything change that, uh, change my openness, change how I am open and honest and uh, forthcoming about everything. 
I don't really like the blue on me, but you know, whatever. Also, let's try it because I feel like a little better. Let's pretend. Um, but yeah, so I uh, I thought nothing would change that, and it it doesn't. It, you know, life doesn't change you. It just changes your outside, if anything, and that's why I'm saying like one of the biggest reasons I'm depressed is that privacy kind of got out of hand and it killed my light. I am someone who is very open. I am someone who likes to share and is out there and is optimistic and is full of life and is happy and happy when I am able to not be driven by fear and I've been driven a lot by fear I've been kind of trying to be someone that I thought I needed to be. I didn't realize that exactly. It's been a confusing time. Um, another thing that you might find is that I, I mean, I wasn't really good at speaking cohesively and, um, and concisely before, but now I feel like, especially with you know, all the depression and stuff, a lot of things are going on in my head. My wiring is not as sharp. So I'm sorry if like I start saying things and then I go on tangents. I mean, I've always kind of done that, but I feel like I am doing that even more now. But um, I'm going to force myself to be myself again because it's terrifying. It's terrifying to be honest. It's terrifying to be who I've always been. Um, it's like... I feel like I'm stuck in cement. And I can't be myself. And it's so frustrating. And um, I want to talk a lot about that. About all the lessons I've learned about living and how you should really, really be courageous enough to stay yourself. I have stayed myself and that's why, like, it's weird because you think you are and you th you don't realize the little things that are changing you and the people, um, the slow way chip chipping away at you that they do because it's not that they want to do that. I think when people want to do that, well, I mean, there's different ways, but um, I don't think people, anyone in my life set out to hurt me or, um, change me or chip away at me with that intention. Um, and it's not just what other people have done. It's also what I've chosen to do. Um, it's not always, and one thing that I want to mention while we're on that topic, it's not always your choice, even though you're choosing it. Um, but I'm talking about both. I'm talking about the choices that I chose and the choices that I didn't choose. Um, you know, I, I don't think that anyone in my life set out to, like, saw me and like, oh, I'm going to, like, tear this person down. You know, she's too happy, she's too good, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I wasn't, you know, perfect, and I'm still not perfect. And, you know, I'm a human, I'm always growing, I'm always evolving and changing, and that's the only thing I can do. Um, but I was happy, and for a while I was happy, even off cam. I mean, off camera mostly. Um, once I started, like, really just living my life... <sighs> Gosh, there's so much to talk about. Um, but I also am going to try to trust that it'll just come to be, to be talked about at the right time, in the right circumstances, and all that stuff. All the stuff that I want to share. Um, yeah. I've been doing a lot of um, thinking lately. Like I said, I, I'm very low, and uh, another reason I'm low is that I feel very stuck. Nothing's panning out um, job-wise, you know, full-time, or like 
a good income i am living not even paycheck to paycheck i'm not even able to do that um my paychecks are very low uh, versus my expenses and when i say expenses like recently i started sort of treating myself i bought like maybe 10 articles uh, of clothing or of anything less more than 10 of everything but 10 articles of clothing because i for two years now almost a year and a half i've been just spending or even more i've been spending just for food and for gas and for very like and for bills and it was not helping um I don't think that shopping therapy is a good thing, but I think shopping therapy within limits is a good thing. Like if you buy yourself, um, I also think like food is not one of those, to me at least. Uh, oh, I'll treat myself to a cup of, you know, ice cream or something, a cup of ice cream. I don't know, I put my ice cream in a cup. Um, I don't think it's the same thing. Having like one little like, a short a shirt like this shirt i didn't buy this um my dad bought it but that shirt um also because i shared with my sister i have a sister i don't know if i mentioned that i think i did but uh, having that this you know i've been wearing it all the time um having like l just one article of clothing that just makes you feel like you're living because otherwise you just uh, you I just feel like I'm just you know get, getting money just to spit it back out to bills um and that's all and I will you know my life is flashing by it's going fast and um I haven't been living my life while paying all these bills and that's not okay because why am I here? I'm not here just to just to take and give, you know? Um, that's another thing, you know, try not to borrow and not to spend more than you need to. I unfortunately had to buy a new phone. I could have bought a flip phone, honestly. That is on me. But I had this idea that when I got it, like, okay, well fresh start i'm going to use it um i did sell my other camera um i'm gonna use it you know for all of that stuff and i i also kind of underestimated my depression and the things that are going on in my life um and how they were affecting and how i was i think too optimistic i'm uh, i'm too optimistic people might say i'm not positive but i am definitely optimistic um, I am positive, uh, because I really, it takes a lot more, I don't, I don't know, anyways, doesn't matter, I'm not trying to sell you on anything, um, which, that's something that is currently changing, but, it's a work in progress, um, but, uh, yeah, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so articles of clothing and living your life and all that stuff. So I did do that. That was also my, I did not listen to my intuition like many times uh, in the course of <laughs> the past stuff. It is incredible, our intuition. If you have intuition, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. If you have intuition, it is both a blessing and a curse. And also it is difficult to learn to hear it because it is kind of very close. Fear and intuition are kind of closely related. But I am definitely learned that intuition is real. I've known things way before I got confirmation they happen. And it is crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I thought. And in that moment, I was like, why am I thinking this? Because that doesn't make sense um and yeah um but yeah so <sighs> living life live your life um it'll flash by don't spend too much don't get in debt i have a lot of anxiety i cannot wait to get out of it and i feel like i can't right now i keep trying to like find ways to not find i'm gonna be 100 percent honest i keep trying to find a full-time job 
I've been applying in my current company a lot. I've been applying outside. I've applied to over 50 jobs in the past couple of months, few months. Um, that's another scary thing because I really want to be stable. I really want to stay, but I really cannot afford to stay. I will end up not only bankrupt, but I will end up like my health bankrupt as well. So it is very, very difficult that I'm sharing that. And I know the risk that they will see this, my coworker. They know, I mean, it's, and that's like a, a point of anger for me that companies choose to ignore the needs of people and hire part-time people. And um, they're getting away with it because no one stands up for that you know we're all scrambling for jobs and we take it and you know me standing up for that is not going to change anything because like okay well we have other people someone else is willing you know to step in so it needs to be like a whole revolution of everyone saying stop we need to survive you want our money we need to have the money to buy your things because right now it's not working is it we don't have money to buy your things like the cafeteria i can't really afford to like um eat in their cafeteria because their prices don't match my salary i don't even have a salary i work part-time you know but yeah so um, i'm throwing that out there because again it's like uh, i'm trying to empower myself Another honest moment that scares me is that I was watching Ashley and I and Jared's wedding videos and posts and all that stuff and seeing her, I'm like, oh my gosh, I was like that. And I miss that. And I see even in pictures like that. And it's funny because uh, last year, TMI, last year, um, my ex, I guess, um, he saw that I was I left on vacation long story about all of that but then when I came back and he watched these uh, pictures that I shared with him out from it he I saw in him this like change like looking at me again as me and in that moment I kind of realized I've not been myself I've since realized also that a lot of factors have contributed to me not being able to be myself. One of the things is our choice for being completely private and not open. And I do mean our because it wasn't just him and it wasn't just me. It was both of us kept ourselves a secret and it really eroded at at our potential to be happy together. Um, and I don't want to do that, you know, like, I want to, like, be able to be happy and to live my life. I see Jared and Ashley, I see how much love they have for each other and how happy they are and how they are themselves with each other and etc. And I'm like, oh, I was always against changing for someone else. And also, in someone else changing for me, like, I want someone to be themselves with me and I want me to be myself with them. But I also have discovered um, that sometimes we don't know who ourselves is. Um, I know that's not correct grammar, <laughs> but I also discover that, you know, influences in our lives way before we even meet this person and influences in their life and all that stuff. Um make it very difficult for us to trust that we are good the way we are and it's so complicated it's more complicated than just saying you know what i want to be accepted the way i am because we kind of also don't understand in our rebellion to be like no i'm going to be me you know i'm gonna like rise up above all the stuff that has put me down or has changed me that doesn't work either because then you're not yourself anymore if you're trying to prove to yourself that you're yourself that's not being yourself it's not being genuine and um so it's it's more complicated we'll talk about that more as you know days and weeks come but um 
watching them just made me moved me to make this video and to really get myself back because one of the things that happened was I lost myself no one really noticed because it was like so slowly incrementally worse or like lost being lost um, I was also like exploring and all that stuff um, exploring like again being who I was told I needed to be by many sources and I think this past year I really wanted to do things right and I actually ended up doing things very wrong in many different ways and um and wrong was done um also like you know but um yeah I'm just going to push myself to get my life back and to get my light back I lost it and I don't like being depressed I like I find it very scary I've never been here I've been close to here but like I've never really been here here and I like I see the thing that's different with Ashley and Jared is that they're a real life couple they're not a movie and I'm like that's real that happiness those tears in his eyes that gratefulness for each other that love that ability to be yourself with each other that's real that exists that happens and also my personality is very different than my family so i'm like oh my gosh people like me exist and uh, yeah here we are so i'm back i've recorded so many videos i'm sorry this is i was thinking about oh i should like put makeup on but i'm like no no that's way too much right now i'm also you know experiencing another you know i'm gonna be honest i'm on my period so i'm not going to make it fancy and like treat it like another shameful thing um yeah, I'm on my period, so I woke up with cramps. I amazingly think I found a solution to cramps emotionally, like mentally, meditatingly. <laughs> Just like a way to relax your body because that cramps are, you know, your insides cramping, tensing up, and right? I think. So, um, like if you find a way to relax all of your body, pain stops. And yeah, that was pretty cool. But um, I'm also having like stomach issues. I've been sick. Another thing, my family from Romania was here. My dad, my sister, and my little brother from over there. They were here. We were on vacation. Um, we went to Chicago and Niagara Falls and back here. And, you know, a whole road trip, which was like really awesome, but also really tiring. I don't think I want to see a car anytime soon. I mean, down that was wonderful anyways so um i don't know what you recorded so i'm gonna reiterate my sister saw build a bear online somehow for i don't know how long and she always wanted to build a bear and so we went to build a bear for the first time in for me in at least 10 years and i wasn't going to like spend any more money it wasn't my money but still like uh i, I don't know but I really kind of wanted to share in that experience with her and I got this one mm, right here <laughs> oh look at the little face oh. and he smells they apparently added scents now I also you can take his wings off but I feel like I'm gonna he's gonna feel naked if I do but yeah he smells like not in his butt but like on his back where they put you know, they sew him up over here. They put the little scent thing. And then on the tummy. And yeah. Oh. Where is the thing? Oh. 
but he's very difficult to sleep with. He has a big tail. This is my other guy that I sleep with for the past two years. Um, and yeah, oh, I didn't show her my big bear. I got, I was like a little kid. I was like my ex's dog. He, oh my gosh, I miss him. He's like the best thing. Um, he, uh, like comes up so excited and he's like bringing his toy. It's like more like if there's a dog that brings all of his toys like for you, you know, um, we bonded. Me and him, we were like, oh gosh, I felt so much love for him, that dog. That dog, like, he, he looked at me and I just felt love. Like, he just had laser vision of love. Like, his eyes just, like, lasered love into you. It was crazy. I love him so much. Um, but yeah, so I have this little guy for now. Um, but yeah, so I've also started Chinese again, and, Jap and Japanese, not Japanese, that's, you know, eventually, but Korean. Uh, I started watching Korean again. Um, I actually discovered that I know more than I think I do. But um, yeah, it's very rusty. I can't think of anything to say in either one. Oh, no. Shu Tsai. That's not one of the things I learned today, though. Ren. No. Ren. Ren. Shren. Shren. Something like that. I'm trying to figure out how in the world you pronounce the Chinese Mandarin R. Um, what else did I learn? Um, but yeah, learning that again, and, um, I don't know, I think I'm gonna have to pause my filmmaking and my everything right now, because as much as, like, that brings me a lot of accomplishment, and that is where my heart is, it also, I don't feel... Like, I want to, I need a break from the emotionality of it. I started writing a script and a half. Well, I have an idea with someone for a mini series, and I want to, like, do that. But I also have my own script, which I really want to develop, and I really want to, like, finish. It's mostly done, uh, which is crazy. It's like over 120 pages, I think, at this point. So it's like first draft, though. And I still have to add. Um, but I'm very excited about that, and I really believe in that so much. However, um, I um, I just need to like pause on that and really just focus on you. I actually auditioned for The Voice earlier this year and The Bachelor. And it, it kind of bummed me out because auditioning for The Bachelor, oh, in temper, te, internal temperature high, I'll be right back. Poor Moose. I feel bad, I feel bad if it doesn't get light, but now that it has too much light, I feel like it's like, too much light? Anyways, auditioning for The Bachelor was really genuine. All of them were genuine. I actually don't want to be famous on The Bachelor to like start my YouTube or filmmaking or songwriting or whatever career. Uh, to me, I'm like a real artist and to me that would be a sellout. I wanted to be on The Bachelor just, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, because I saw them and they're all like, it's just a good friend network. For me, I think like they are. I like the people in there. There's all sorts of different people, and they're like together, and it's like kind of the experience I never had as far as friends go, um, college and high school and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. So that's kind of really why I wanted to be on The Bachelor. <laughs> I wanted to make friends. I wanted to be in a community and. I just wanted that so badly. 
Um, did not hear back. They said within a week I would. My phone also had issues, but I don't think they called. I don't think I heard back from them, which is kind of, I guess it's odd, but not really. Maybe, you know, they said they would like contact me. Maybe it's just if you make it, I guess. I don't know. So that's kind of sad. Um, and also as far as like love and all that stuff. Um, I really want it, but it's, it is a very... I'm not... I'm both in that space and not at the same time. Um, I know how I want to feel in love. I, want, I know that I want my best friend and I, I know, I think I'm worried because I don't know how that happens. Um, even with friends, I don't feel like, even with life, with uh, jobs and stuff, I was telling someone actually recently, like I just feel like People know things and do things that everyone does and I just don't know. Like since I was little I remember people just and they assume that you do the same. And that was like one of the hard parts about like stuff uh, recently, some stuff recently where I feel like there's been um, assumptions made about me based on who those people are, not who I am. But that's kind of all you see is kind of who you are. Unless you are able to sort of see other people for being other people. But we all kind of have bias, you know. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, I don't know what I was talking about. I have I don't have pregnancy brain, I have depression brain, which is kind of the same because it's hormonally challenging <laughs> um but yeah um so yeah welcome back to me i mean i don't know i want to welcome you back um i am i do this and everything that i do publicly i do it for bettering other people's lives not really li yeah, lives, but just joy. I want people to have more joy in their life. And that comes with a lot of self-awareness and work and self-discovery. And when I say things, I want them to be taken as like questions for you, for yourself. Not as believe this, think this, say this, do this. But like, how do I see that? What she just said, what Arena just said, how do I see that and why? You know, I just want to create self-awareness just to spread that. And I don't know if that's like very sexy. So probably that's not going to, you know, win a lot of audience members. But especially how I do it. Ah, your internal temperature again. That might look like a Korean uh, drama star or scene. <laughs> Although I don't think they would have, uh, what is his name? Something Tooth. I forget his name. Tooth. Toothless. Toothless. Oh yeah. Oh, so cute. I really, if I could have one character, when I was little I wanted Raja. Now that I've grown up, I want Toothless to be the one animal, mystical character out there from Disney. Or, is he Disney? I don't know. Whatever. Um, but yeah, anyway, so... Um, gosh, I'm already, like, thinking about second-guessing things, blah, 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 blah. But no, I'm just going to, like push forward, be in the moment, be present in the moment, and just push forward and uh, find a way back to myself somehow. Yeah. It's, I don't know. 
I really do like who I am. And I really believe in myself. People don't see that because I'm not like closed off from people. I'm not, I'm open and I'm open to growing and changing and open to being and um, open to others and all that stuff. So um, sometimes, I don't know, I, I've been perceived in many ways and a lot of the times it really is true that you are perceived how as a projection of those, excuse me, of those people. Um, and I've done it too. I've projected myself on other people and it's not always bad. It's sometimes good. I mean, it's, it's not always projecting bad things onto other people. Sometimes it's projecting good things onto other people and either way it can be just as troublesome. So I don't know. I'm going to stop talking before, you know, this was good. It's not going to be as edited, I think, because I just, I don't know. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. I, this depression is like depression. Um, I don't believe in drugs. I'm not going to be taking any drugs. I am very confident about working through this. Um, even though I've been in some very, very extreme lows but I'm very confident in having the ability to do this with the people that, or yeah, the, the sources, resources, everything, and myself um, that I have. So cool, I'm gonna go eat now and yeah. And I pulled you out because I was going to do it on my phone. I was going to do YouTube live. But I felt like, no, I actually was looking at YouTube and my past couple of videos and I'm like, yeah, I want this look. I want the Sony digital camera look. I like Sony. I like Sony a lot. My dad has a Sony uh, phone. Wasn't that impressed with the pictures and the... It wasn't that... I mean, it wasn't bad at all. But I think I still expect so much more. Either way, I'm not going back to Apple because they are false advertising all the way. Do not believe them in anything that they advertise about their phones. The phones, the tennis at least, it is not water resistant even. They're like, oh, it's better than, you know, past models. It is not. It is worse. It is. I was at Niagara Falls and they got phone at water damaged. So... I was in heavy rain and it got water damaged and if it was just me cool but it wasn't actually just me I actually heard someone say exactly the same story they were at Niagara Falls and they lost their phone and many other people you know lost their phone compared to like the 7 the 7 was a lot more waterproof however not in salt water and I learned that lesson that was the only <laughs> downside of that I wish I could go back and buy a 7 you know but this one does have a better camera but I don't know if it's that worth it temper temperature have a wonderful day bye peace love and compassion